No, don't you try to go out. I see you. Come here, I want to jump up on you. <laughs> hey, boy. Back in my eyes. I know. Can you strut your stuff up there? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello. <laughs> Hi. It's like, can I please get on your shoulder? That's what you have on your shoulder. Okay. <laughs> they just gotta get up there. Oh no, I do not like that position. No, no. <laughs> It is Saturday, September 11th. So 9-11 for all of us here in the U.S. That is uh, a, a date that uh, brings on a lot of really tough memories, I know for a lot of us, myself included. So I remember that day very, very vividly. So while that's very somber, you guys know that we have a lot that we have still to do today. So we got a lot of the chores done. And you know, for September, for us here in Arizona, it's a difficult time because it's still hot. <laughs> we had a record breaking day. I think it was on either Wednesday or Thursday, um, 110 degrees. And we got baby chickies here that we need to talk to you guys about. Um, but one of the things I don't want to forget, Lori did some editing to this week. One of them was the podcast. I did. did. Your first podcast. So if you guys don't know, we take our live stream that we do monthly and turn that into a podcast. We've got that on the website. The website link is down below if you guys want to check that out. And the podcast tab has that podcast. And it's a much shorter version of our Q&A. Yeah, we just kind of cut out a lot of the... All the extra. Extra. <laughs> yeah, a lot of just bantering back and forth with you guys. Yeah. But we got a few things to do. We're going to let the chickens have fun here. Turkeys are getting big. But the turkeys are not the new babies in town. So <laughs> we had uh, Lori, you're going to see it here in just a few minutes. In fact, actually, Lori's been busy all week. So before we get to today, let's rewind a little bit and let's see what Lori's actually been doing this week. It is Tuesday, September 7th, and Dwayne and I spent the weekend fertilizing. We did get our east and western orchards done, as well as the trees on the back of the property. Uh, so today I am going to fertilize our grapevines. So we do have 46 grapevines here. How we have it set up, we have the water two feet above ground that drips down. I'm just gonna scrape back the wood chips right below each of the water spigots on each side of the vine and add the fertilizer right in there, cover it back up with wood chips, and then it'll water later on today. So I got the 23 vines on this side of the vineyard area fertilized. Uh, we did use the Bioflora crumbles for the grapevines this year. For the trees this weekend, we, it, we did use the composted pig manure. And then I do still have trees like the citrus trees and some of the mulberry trees that I need to fertilize this week as well, which I will be using the composted chicken manure. So I'm gonna get the other 23 grapevines done and we'll see you guys back. So all the grapevines are done. They are all fertilized um, as well as I did the three pots of roses that we have since those I usually try to do at the beginning of every month and the apple tree that we have in the pot as well in the garden area. So those are all done. So we have meat birds coming in this week. They're supposed to ship on Wednesday, so we should get them hopefully Thursday or Friday. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the brooder. I have a little bit of time. Um, I need to run into town and get grocery shopping done for the week, but I'm gonna get that set up um, as much as I can right now so that we're ready for those guys to come in this week. So I got the pine shavings, the light, um, I got the water and the feeders in here, just need to fill those. The light, we do do it on a chain so we can adjust it as far as um, what they are needing. So if it looks like they're getting too cold, we can lower it, too warm, we can raise it. I also have a second lamp that um, usually in winter time we would use a second lamp or this time of year we don't really, I don't think we're gonna need it, but I'll kind of watch them and see how they do. But they're probably only gonna be in here for the first week because there's so many of them. Then we'll have to move them out into one of the tractors. So now we just need to wait for them to come in. 
so I am back to fertilizing today. Um, I've gotten the mulberries and the kumquats done and thought I would take you guys along with me to do the citrus trees up front. So that's what we're doing next. So I am using the composted chicken manure that we have for the citrus trees and I did also for the um, mulberry trees. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop some more of this, go up and start fertilizing. All right, so just got a call that the um, broiler chicks are at the post office. So I'm headed there now to go get them. We got 150 chicks that just came in. Um, we did get these from Ideal Poultry, is who we ordered them from. So they sound good. All right, so I'm gonna get home, get these chicks on water, and just wanted to say hello to Natalie. It was nice seeing you again. Dwayne and I had met Natalie um, several weeks ago over at Tractor Supply. And um, I just ran into her today at the post office getting the chicks, and she was picking up some guineas. So there's a lot of them in here. We did get a few extra ones in the boxes um, as I was counting them. They're doing really well on the water. They're climbing in the water even to drink it as well. But, um, and I did put the food in here and they're actually attacking the food really well also. So they're not gonna last long in the brooder here because it's just not gonna be enough space for them. So we will have to figure out where we're gonna move them next. But I'll keep watching them. I do have the heat on right now because it's a little breezy out here. It's probably about 95 right now, um, but breezy, so I have the heat on. I'll just kind of watch them and then turn it off probably in a little while when it hits um, closer to 100. And that way they're you know not too warm. So the broiler chicks are doing great um, this morning. They did great through the night. We did end up splitting some of them up. We took about 30 of them out and put them in a smaller brooder inside the house just because there were so many of them in the brooder there, but they're doing great. And then this morning what I'm going to do is um, we have some citrus up front that are kind of outgrowing the smaller cage. I'm going to go ahead and pull the smaller cage off and do a double cage on some of these up front here. Um, like right here we have one of our mandarin trees. So you can see it's kind of pushing against that cage and um, we are getting branches that are growing through it, which we don't want. So I have a handful up here that I'm gonna go ahead and switch out. All right, so I was able to get six more of our citrus trees to the larger cages. Maybe you can see kind of behind me here. So this was our lemon tree that was really grown out and you can see that this one also is even pushing this double cage. But hopefully pretty soon um, they'll get enough growth on them big enough that we'll be able to take them off completely and not have to worry about them having cages on it. But right now with them, being so young and so low to the ground, the rabbits um, don't wanna take the chances with them. Now I have six cages 
like single smaller cages put together already so a couple weeks ago i had planted some pumpkin seeds something's getting in and eating the little starts so i think i have one left so i think i'm going to use these cages and put them on those so it's a bigger cage and then have to do some bird netting on top of it so it's either birds or ground squirrels that climbed in and started eating those so we can see if we can maybe plant some more. It might be too late to plant more, but I'm gonna give it a try. They can see Lori's been very, very busy this week. She's finding that her time is filled up very easily being on the farm full time now. But we wanted to give you guys an update on the sorghum. If you guys are watching the video that we're posting today, you'll see that we actually did another cut on the sorghum right before fall. And we used that chop and drop as a green manure in all of our pome fruit here on the Eastern Orchard. So that was all done last weekend and we have several areas already where we have shoots that are coming up out of this sorghum. A couple of them have grown over a foot, pushing two feet on a few of these and they're immediately putting on grain heads. So definitely ready for fall just like we are. <laughs> but the new growth on this sorghum is really incredible to see. We still have hot temperatures. We're still, you know, 105, 110, but the forecast is starting to get us down near that 100 degree mark. And more importantly, we're getting towards that equinox where we have about the same amount of time at night as we do during the day. And that time without the intense pressure from the sun is really doing a lot for this sorghum and really everything that's green around the farm. But I'll tell you what, this sorghum has just done amazing. It's really looking forward to seeing if we can get a harvest off of these, especially for our chickens and our turkeys. Just more. Just kind of more, just directly like that. Just straight ahead. This way? No, I still did this Back. that way too. Yeah. All right, so I was able to get the larger cages on these pumpkins, which this is my one that is left that hadn't gotten eaten. So I did plant a couple more pumpkins in each of them and a cowpea as well. And then this one I did get netting on top so that nothing can get in. So now just need to get netting on the rest of them. And hopefully they will come up and it wasn't too late to get those planted again. So one of the things that we had this week was we got in some chickies. We did. Right, we got in a lot of chickies. We got 150, actually 153 to be exact. 153, so Ideal Poultry, they always have done a great job. We got, a, we usually get the chicks from them in about 24 hours and that's what happened this time. Lori was home, so she was able to get the chicks super, super quick. So basically they only had about 24 hours on their own before they had food and water. And when we first decided on the number of chicks, we did that based on our losses. So our tip, typically we lose anywhere from a low of about 15, 10 to 15% of the chickens to much higher than that, so 20, 30%. So we figured, well, given our history and ability, <laughs> we should order a few extra. And the best we've ever done prior to this was we lost one chick the first night. And so far checking these, how many have we lost here in two days? Zero. None. So, uh, we still have 153. We still have 153 two days later, which is fantastic and scary and a problem. <laughs> All at the same time, we really uh, kind of messed up there. So, assuming they continue to do well, um, we have way too many chicks. We're going to figure it out, but uh, we had to split these up, and we've got some in the house, 30 in the house, and then we have all these here in the brooder. So, we're going to go ahead and take care of the brooder, and we'll show you just how full this thing is after two days. You can see they're adorable and they're doing fantastic. This is by far the best batch that we've had. I mean, not losing a chick after a couple days is amazing if you guys have raised these before and having 153 of them survive consistently for a couple days now is pretty cool. That gives us a whole new set of problems because, you know, we base 
everything as far as capacity off of assuming those losses because they're pretty consistent. Our intention was to have these in here for a week, have those normal losses and then fit them into a tractor and kind of go from there. So we've already had to split up about 30 into a smaller brooder because we're running out of space. And now of course we have to figure out <laughs> where we're gonna put them within about a week or so. So what we've done is we've taken one of our small tractors um, out of storage basically and we're going to be utilizing that on the pasture to have these guys on here in the future. And then we're just going to have to kind of see how we do here over the next few weeks and find homes for all of these baby chicks that, uh, that we have. It's really great to see that we're not having those losses, especially right here at the beginning of the process. Really encouraging to Lori and I. We've got pigs coming soon and we need to get ready for the pigs. So what Lori and I are gonna work on next is actually gonna be the pig feeder. We built that last time with flaps and those are very, very noisy. And because we didn't get the livestock acre uh, finished, and we're kind of changing our minds of what we want to do with that. These guys are going to be closer to the house again. And we need to make sure that that feeder is not too noisy, which is the problem that we had before. So I'll kind of show you guys what our plan is as far as the flaps for the feeder. That is much better than the whacking noise <laughs> that those individual wooden, basically, doors would make. So this is actually a barn mat. <laughs> so it's very thick rubber. I don't know how long this is gonna hold up against the pigs. Probably not very long, but we figured we wanted to try something that wasn't quite as loud on our ears, at least for this season. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that this will get through there, but I can definitely handle that as opposed to the thwacking noise that the, uh, that the wood made. So it is definitely starting to already warm up today. I think we're gonna be low hundreds, right? 102, 104, mm -hmm. something like that. So it's still really hot. One of the things I noticed we had low, we had reduced our watering schedule down to one day a week and I kind of messed up because <laughs> we only watered for, uh, we only did 45 gallons on the last water and now it waters 60 gallons, but it went a whole week on 45 gallons, which is a problem. So, but hopefully waters this weekend, we should catch up and if it stays in the low hundreds, we should be okay, but probably shouldn't have reduced the water yet. So how was, uh, how was this week for you? Yeah, it was actually a short week on the farm. Got lots of projects done. We got the chicks in. It's funny because all I get is just text messages from Lori during the week now and when I'm at work and I got three texts in a row from her, which was unusual. And it was a picture <laughs> of all the chicks and basically no space in that brood or so. <laughs> I, was kinda, I was getting a little nervous, needless to say. So that's gonna change things up a little bit for us, for sure. Yeah, when I was putting them in there, it was like never ending. It was, there was just more and more and more. Well, and I think you were doing the editing and I think we've got a good time lapse for you guys on her putting the chicks in there, but it was like a never ending addition. Yeah. So. 150 chicks is a lot of chicks. Fall season's upon us. We have planting we need to get done. We've got the pigs that are still coming on the farm here in the next few weeks. So we've got to get ready for them while you guys saw us working on that feeder today. So we've got that ahead of us and planting. Really appreciate you guys being here today. So today was our weekly vlog. It's kind of our weekly update that we give to everybody to get an idea of what's going on around the farm and keep everybody updated. But if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we'd love to have you as a subscriber and share the content. If you know anybody that's into this kind of thing, definitely helps us out here if you share the content. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down below. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. So it's closer to the edge? Yep. 
one step closer to the edge? Are you about to break? <laughs> what? Never mind. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think you need to scoot over next to me, though. Well, this cage is like in the way. Oh. And I'm in front of the cage, so I'm sinking. You're stinking. I, <laughs> I can't smell you at all. I said I'm sinking. Oh. <laughs> okay, that was, that was confusing. That whole conversation was a little odd. <laughs> I'm sure I stink too from sweating so much this morning. <laughs> no. <laughs> you smell scrumptious. I smell like salty sweat. <laughs> mm. I'm not going to lick you. That sounds horrible. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All we need to do is get in front of the camera and be our normal selves. <laughs> One of the things we know for sure is September sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we do not like <laughs> September. Uh, is there anybody out there in the Phoenix area that actually likes September? I mean, our anniversary is in September, so I guess maybe I should. <laughs> okay, wow. other than our anniversary. Okay. <laughs> it's our 25 year anniversary too. It is. It's our silver anniversary. Yeah, so anyways. <laughs> the project, did you see that thing go in that hole? Oh, that's a wasp. That's pretty cool. Oh, he was, he's huge. Oh my goodness. Look at that. He's freaking me out. Oh, that was cool, man. Chicks is a lot of chicks. So, I mean, chicken chicks. I'm not trying to be like Mel Chauvinist or anything, calling, calling anybody chicks. I would never do that. Oh, your mind. Yeah, nobody wants to be up in this mind at all.